And ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned, our executive training director, Monique Johnson. She is a guru and a specialist in social media. Because in your business, whether you're a book, you're going to write a book, have a business, okay, or whatever you want to do, you've got to have a strong foundation to be able to get your message, whatever it might be, your, your special course, your special business, you've got to be able to get it up in front of people that want to talk to you. Communication, right? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, are, are you ready? Yep. All right. Let's give a wonderful round of applause to Monique Johnson. Come on down. <laughs> Woo! How's everyone doing? I don't have I just realized I do not have a clicker. I'm sorry. Anyone who does not have a smartphone. Okay, just checking. Okay. Thank you. All right, so today, I know on the schedule we uh, have something on there about social video selling. But based on our experience being here thus far, I figured let's do some general social media instead of really going into video. I feel that's a little bit more advanced um, for some of you guys, so I wanna make sure we cover the basics. So today we're gonna talk about the major do's and don'ts of social media. Now, I want to just share a very quick story with you guys as to how I got started with social media, but I truly believe that social media literally saved my life. So back in 2012 is when I had to swallow all my pride and move back into my parents' condominium. And this is the room that I stayed in. It was barely, I don't know, this big. I had a twin bed. That was the only window you could see. And even at the time, the boxes were piled even higher, okay? This is when I really hit rock bottom in life. Um, I'm a first generation American. My parents are Jamaican immigrants and so, if any of you ever met someone who's been raised by immigrants, education is everything. You must do med, med school, business, something, or get a job on Wall Street, in which that's what I did. But I decided, I decided to take my own path, take matter into my own hands, and not allow how I was raised and how just these different external factors affected my decisions of how I wanted to live the rest of my life. I did not want to stay at a corporate job and waste away for the next 25 years, okay? And so at this time, back in 2012, is when I decided to commit to learning all that I knew about social media. I did get started before then, right? But this is when I decided to truly commit to this and really help me network, build a business from scratch, and this is why I'm here today. So with that said, do you mind making a commitment to each other today? No, no? yes, yes, no? Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> I want you all to make a commitment from this presentation that as soon as you know that social media is the key to 10X your company, you will go all in. Can we make that commitment right now? Yeah. All right, awesome. Now what does going all in exactly mean? This, they barely did anything, right? This is, not, this is them dabbling into landscaping. This is going all in, right? This is going all in. We just came through the holidays. This is not going all in. I don't know what this is, okay? But this is going all in. So that's what I mean. So by the end of this presentation, when you make this commitment, you are going to go all in once you learn how to use social media for your business. So bring out your front phones real quick. We're gonna try and go through this fast, but because of sake of time, I can't stay on this too long. But open up the browser on your phone. So for iPhones, that's primarily Safari or Chrome. Um, for Androids, I'm assuming it's Chrome or Explorer. I'm, I'm not exactly sure I'm an iPhone user. Open up your browser and type this in. m.me forward slash Monique, M-O-N-I-Q-U-E, 
the letter O, Johnson Live. I know that's a lot, but I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes, okay? Now, don't be alarmed if Facebook Messenger pops up. You're supposed to see that. I'm gonna leave this on for just one more second real quick, and then I gotta move on. M.me forward slash Monique O. Johnson Live. All right? When you get to the next screen, you should see a bottom towards the end, at the bottom, I'm sorry, that says get started, tap on that. And then I want you guys to type this word, Facebook, and press send. And whoever does that, let me know what happens when you get to that point. OK, Sony, can you please uh, read aloud what just happened? So that's what's supposed to happen. Thank you, Sony. So pretty much what I just created was automation. People like to call it chatbots. I hate that name, to be honest. It turns off a lot of people. But I just wanted to share with you guys, this is something that you all can set up as a speaker, right, to capture people's um, information utilizing social media. So from here on out, I can build my rapport and relationship with you. Now imagine tying this up to a video you put on social media and physically saying, if you say this word Facebook and type it in the comment below, they're instantly messaged. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so I just wanted to share with that. I can't stay on this too long. I know some of you guys are, might have some issues, but we'll get back to this. And that was just a brief tutorial on what it would look like. I'm gonna move on from that. Who knows this guy? Yell out his name. Right. Who does not know this guy? Okay, I'm gonna let him know. He's gonna be very shocked. All right, this is Grant Cardone. Now, the reason why I'm bringing you to you his attention is he is literally everywhere. He, he utilizes social media to let you be on top of mind. And now, this is actually one of the first times I've, I've presented in front of people where they did not know who he is. So, yeah, he still has some work to do. In fact, his mission is to be known literally across the world as the best salesperson in the world, okay? And he, he, he also invests in real estate and things like that, but he uses social media to make this happen. Can I get a volunteer to read this quote real quick? Anthony. You have to be known. You have to be um, thought for. Thought of. You have to be thought of for that product, service, or an idea before your competitors. So when people want to buy a product, they think of you and your product. So this is Grant Cardone's quote. This is his reason why he uses social media the way that he does. Some people might view it as being aggressive, but this is why people know who he is, and he is the first person that people think of when they're ready to buy, when they want to learn about selling or real estate investing, okay? And what I want you guys to take away from this is with social media, especially as speakers, is that you have to be known. There has to be some sort of presence. And I know a lot of you guys are afraid of social media, but social media is the lowest hanging fruit, believe it or not, versus doing cold emails, cold letters, direct mailers. You have to be known. And even if you were to reach people from these cold attempts, the first thing they're gonna do is look online and look on social media. So you have to be known. And thought of before your competitors meaning there are other speakers out there who have a presence on social media. That's why they're getting gigs. If you're not on there and you're wondering what's happening, look at what people in your space are doing, okay? And they think of you and your products when they wanna buy. So in what I want you guys to walk away here with this particular presentation is how to use social media and be effective and not be used by social media. I think a lot of times we have that sort of mindset that we're just this consumer where we have to be on it all day. How about we flip the script and have it where you are effectively using it? <laughs> so there's so many different platforms, right? So many different platforms uh, with social media. So let's talk about the 800 pound gorilla in the room. That's Facebook, okay? 
because you know there's Facebook, there's Instagram, there's Snapchat, all sorts of different platforms. But in this particular presentation, we are going to focus on Facebook because of various reasons. Number one is that your mom's mom is on there. There's so many different grandmothers. There's Gen Xers. There's, there's various types of demographics on this platform. And it's best for reaching millennials and Gen Xers and those sort of things. And in fact, I thought this was a fun fact that, and I was surprised because I'm a millennial, as you guys know <laughs> by now. But you know, Gen Xers spend nearly seven hours per week on social. OK? That's huge. That's a huge, huge opportunity for you guys, whether you're selling, whether you're doing products, whether you are speaking, all right? <clears throat> How many people live on this earth? Anybody know? Seven billion. Oh, this is the first group who's ever been able to tell me that. That's awesome. All right. How many people, well, two billion people are on Facebook, OK? That's huge. That's another reason why Facebook cannot be ignored. Imagine 7 billion people on this earth, and there's 2 billion of that pie that you can reach into. That's almost a third of the world's population. That's huge, OK? Facebook cannot be ignored, despite what you hear of the algorithm changes, despite of what you hear of you know, these different changes that are coming up, or how much more money you got to spend on there. Facebook cannot be ignored. Sorry. Oh, what I wanted to show you guys is instead of seeing it as 2 billion users, it's 2 billion prospects. OK? 2 billion prospects for you to get in front of to build your business, to sell your products, to sell your services. Make sense? Yeah. All right. So this is what social media is all about. The fact that we've been here this whole weekend, what have we been doing? We've been what? Engaging. We've been developing new um, relationships. And, and, and also just talking and getting to know each other, right? That's what social media is all about. It's not this big, scary thing where, um, and unfortunately, there's people who abuse these platforms, so it doesn't give you like a great first impression. But social media is all about engagement, rather just what you call one-way broadcasting on a platform. And this is what I mean. Let's, let's talk about real estate real quick, right? Realtors, what they're so guilty of doing is this. They'll put a picture up of a house and say, open house at such and such address, come, come now. Or I have this house you know, for sale, come, come buy it right now. That's them broadcasting at you. Who cares that you have this house? right? What value are you providing? Are people actually looking up the address itself directly? No. You're, you're, when you are starting with social media, it's not about look at me, look at me, look at me. And I feel like a lot of us, unfortunately, social media is the reason why we have the look at me, look at me, look at me, uh, narcissistic <laughs> views of ourselves in today's world, unfortunately. Um, because we get caught up in likes and views and who gave me a, a thumbs up versus a dislike. But when it comes to social media for business, it's all about what value can, can you provide, right? It's all about, yes, giving out your best content for free. It's OK, because guess what? They're not going to remember it, and you can still charge for it, OK? So yes, give out your best content. Don't try to say, oh, I'm going to hold this in. I got to keep my secrets to myself. People are not going to like that. People are not going to learn about you or anything like that. Does that make sense? So when it comes to social media, it starts with this. And this is a wheel, right? This is a wheel. And the reason why I say that is the wheel came to fruition in 3200 BC, if you guys were to look it up. But we all know it actually dates back way you know, before that during caveman times. And the reason why it took so long for it to come to fruition is that middle part, right? The axle had to be um, created. But if you think about it, the wheel has not changed since it came to fruition. We still use it on cars, baby strollers, scooters. You know, I feel like the wheel is the equivalent of modern technology of the fax machine. I still can't believe we are using the fax machines, OK? Like, I think, I think that's bananas to me. But you know, you know the saying, don't reinvent the wheel, right? Right? Yeah. 
okay? Well, when it comes to social media, don't reinvent the wheel. Don't start from scratch, okay? And what I call is start doing what you call pre-existing wheels, okay? So this is me actually creating a video, but more specifically a live video on Facebook, okay? Selling my first ever product, all right? And as you can see here, I'm using a whiteboard and um, this chalkboard in, in the background. And the reason why I decided to sell my product or go live about it this way is because I, this is considered an old form school of thinking, I mean, of teaching, right? As actually, I grew up, even though I'm a millennial, yes, I still had the chalkboard. Like the smart boards came into fruition when I was like in high school, okay? I know there's some children right now who have no idea what a chalkboard is, which I think is asinine. But anyway, um, you know, this whole way of, of, of teaching is, is considered old school. But guess what? I found other pre-existing wheels, duplicated it by taking ownership of it, emulating it, and putting my own spin on it. So the reason why I did it like this is because I saw this guy. Anybody know who Russell Brunson is? All right. So here's one of um, these live streams where he just literally used his phone, nothing fancy, and he did a, a live webinar and sold directly from it. And look, it's nothing fancy or anything. He has his hand po um, pointing at a screen. That's it, right? Here's a more professional setup, right, where he actually has a stage and things like that. But from this particular live stream, he sold his two comma, two comma coaching club directly from it. So I'm like, huh, that's interesting. You know, we consider marketers so up to date on the most recent trends. And I'm like, why is he using a, a, a whiteboard? Like, who does that? Like, I'm surprised it's not digital. But I'm like, okay, I guess that's what he does. Anybody know who Frank Kern is? He's another marketer. And as you can see here, he has an even more fancier setup because not only does he have the whiteboard flip chart, but then he has that digital board that you see there, right, where it's like a, a big monitor or screen. And from here, he literally goes in and fills this out. This is when he was selling his uh, book blueprint product, and he sold directly from it. So because I saw these streams initially, this type of content that was being created from people who I knew were selling, who were, um, you know, who I knew were selling, but also seeing people live buying the product, I was like, I got to do the same thing. I'm like, I'm overthinking this. Let me find the pre-existing wheels that are working, the wheels that are churning money or churning to get you leads, churning to help you get on stage. And as a result, because of me going live with the whiteboard, I, I have booked gigs speaking as a result. And that's another thing. It gives a taste of your talent and, of course, your expertise as well. It all boils down into one. Does that make sense? Okay. Here's another example. Um, Dustin Matthews, uh, former CEO of another company, and he and I had the opportunity to work together. And because I knew what Russell and Frank and even my initial success, when we worked together, we did a live stream. I like to call it the author whiteboard stream. And he was able to sell his book directly from going live. All right, so again, find the pre-existing wheels that are working, take ownership of it, emulate it, and then put your own spin on it, and it'll work. Versus looking at the computer, I don't know what to do. Then you use that as an excuse not to do anything. Then you're wondering why you're not getting gigs and why you're not getting paid. Make sense? OK. Um, someone mentioned Dr. Josh Axe earlier, right, when we had um, Dr. Liz and Tina up here. You know, here's another prime example. Dr. Josh, this is in his kitchen in his house, okay? And he has a whiteboard, and here he is talking about CBD oil, but he's also getting people to sign up for his program. And again, he's just using a whiteboard, and either it was his phone or his, or his uh, webcam to make that happen. Anybody familiar with this guy? Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk, right? And show me, what is it that you guys see that's happening on here? Videos, more than 90% of the content he's putting on his platform are videos, okay? 
So when it comes to social media, video is king. Okay, video is king. He's another person to look at as a pre-existing will to see what's working. All right, if anything, he's more so the person to look at to build your personal brand, to build a celebrity platform. Okay, because you don't necessarily see him uh, selling directly from his content, but his content sells for him. Make sense? So that's another way to think about it or to think of how to create content for social media. I'm going to move on. Okay, so again, don't reinvent the wheel. So based on these content types, who here can tell me the ranking of order as to how important it is on Facebook? Videos, then what? Then, yes. Videos, photos, written content. And then even above videos is live video, okay? When I say videos, that means pre-recorded content, content that you would regularly put on YouTube, you know, pre-recorded videos. Live videos is king of kings, <laughs> right? King of kings. And the thing is, that's with any social media platform, believe it or not. Any social media platform that actually offers live video, that is high. Even with YouTube, believe it or not, YouTube is strictly a video platform, but live video still is king when it comes to ranking in their algorithm. All right? Because the truth of the matter is this. This is the world we live in. We live in the thumb scrolling world. Because I'm a millennial, literally, I feel like when I get to 50 or 60, I'm going to start having arthritis problems. I feel like this is going to be the next epidemic for health. Seriously, for younger people. Because the amount of times that we are scrolling on our phones all the freaking time, right? All the time. And the thing is, it's all about what can we do to stop that thumb roll? Thumb scroll, sorry. What can we do to stop it? Well, as you can see here, because he sees that moving B, AKA a moving picture, AKA a video, that's how you stop that, that thumb scroll, okay? So for any of your prospects, for anybody who is organizing conferences, they're on social. So what can you do to stop them thumb, uh, scrolling their thumbs, right? Because a lot of people on social media, they are viewing content more so on their mobile devices than their desktops or computers. I guarantee you because even here, the fact that we don't have necessarily have internet, you guys have been on your phones checking out your social media. Easily, hands down. Anytime you're bored, anytime you're waiting on someone, what do you do? You whip out that phone and you get on Facebook or check your email or something, right? But you're doing something with that thumb, okay? All right. And this is all you need, guys. And this is why I'm glad as part of SPC, uh, both Koji and I are one of the ETDs of this amazing organization because, you know, Koji has an amazing program where he talks about hooking up your, your smartphone, right? So you don't come off as an amateur and, and becoming a professional. But this is all you need. You don't need a fancy DSLR like what um, Tasha and Koji has back there. You don't need that for social media, especially when you're getting started. If anything, you need to earn that. You don't deserve it right now. Let your content earn that. Okay, your content needs to earn that level because right now you don't, you don't deserve it, okay? Use your phone. Use your phone and then I have a one and a half there, your computer, meaning your webcam that comes with your computer. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less, all right? Now, I just wanna briefly go over this. We did have this question um, during our workshop earlier and it's like, okay, Monique, we're on Facebook but you know, do I have a business page, AKA fan page, or do I have a profile? What do I post on that? You know, how does this all work together? So, fan page is king. I don't care if you have five followers on there. Post majority of your business content on your fan page because there's so much you can do strategic wise like what I just shared with you when Sony um, read out loud uh, the automation that happens, guess what? That can only happen on your fan page, not on your personal profile. If you ever want to get to the level where you actually use, have a budget to pay traffic and create ads to help you 
um, gain your presence so you can get on stage, that can only happen on the fan page. If you want to really look into the, your videos and see the detailed analytics and see where people are dropping off so you can create even better content, it can only happen on your fan page, all right? So really, when it comes to the, um, the fan page and, and, and the profile, I like to use the 80-20 rule, Pareto principle, principle. So because your fan page is in existence to build your personal brand and as a business, 80% of your business type of content, and when I say business, that doesn't mean you're selling, okay? People need to know, like, and trust and love you first before you can even think about selling. Right? Put 80% of that and then the 20% of your personal life of what you feel comfortable with. Okay? And vice versa, flip the script for your personal profile. Personal profile, 80% of your personal type of stuff that you like to share in there. And then share the 20% of business and things that you, you primarily would put on your fan page. Does that make sense? That's kind of like a good kind of uh, metric to determine how to um, determine the type of content you want to post. <clears throat> now, I have a question for you guys. If you're on social media, why the heck are you not being social? And I'm talking about those people who are like, okay, I'm getting on Facebook, but I'm only like my friends can see this, or only like I'm gonna block off the whole thing. And then you're wondering why you can't get business. Why are you on social media if you're not going to be social? To me, that's the equivalent of back in the day. Yes, I'm a millennial, but back in the day, that time where, oh, I would never give out my cell phone as my main point of contact. I have my home phone number. In this day and age, what now? People barely have landlines, right? It's all about your mobile device. And I feel the same thing with social media. Why are you on social media if you're not going to be social and fully utilize the tools that are there? Especially if you want to build a business. It just doesn't make sense to me. So stop not being social. And I understand some of you guys might not be comfortable with certain things, and that's fine. But don't completely cut yourself off from the world. And then you're wondering why you're struggling with getting paid, uh, speaking gigs, or getting on stage, and things like that. Now, I'm going to quickly go over this because we are very limited on time, but I decided to incorporate two other platforms in here, especially as speakers. Instagram cannot be ignored right now. It is the hottest thing going on, and it's owned by Facebook. And even with Instagram, you can do live video, you can do video, you can do what you call stories. You can do stories on Facebook as well, but stories is where it's at on Instagram. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, is the opportunity to create these 15 second segments that are stitched together to create what you call a story. And they're really, really cool. And they only last for 24 hours. However, you can download them and archive them and all that great stuff. But when it comes to getting on stage, when it comes to selling your products and services or anything, whether it's the pictures you're putting on that platform, because we all know Instagram is run primarily by pictures, it's all about driving them to the DM. And when I say DM, that means direct message, AKA a personal message. You know how you can do a personal message on Facebook? That's what DM means. That's where business is connected, is, not, uh, is conducted. It's not on physically, publicly, uh, on the newsfeed of, of Instagram. It's all about how can I get them inside on a personal level. Also, you want to reply to comments, OK? You want to reply to the comments, to the various uh, comments that people, because you know people didn't have to leave a comment. Don't ignore them, OK? And then what you do is you encourage that conversation, get that conversation going, and then get them to the DM, all right? And then here, just real quick, if you guys want to take a picture of this, you know, shoot at least one video per week, a one minute video, that's the maximum time that you can put on Instagram at least once a week, and capture five to 10 stories per week, just to get you started, just to get you started. LinkedIn, especially in the professional world, especially with speaking, you cannot ignore LinkedIn either, okay? And so, real quick, create videos. The organic reach on LinkedIn videos is very, very strong and powerful right now. So take advantage of it. 10 minutes is the maximum amount. I'm not saying for you to do 10 minutes, but 10 minutes is the maximum amount. 
You can do live videos on this platform, but it's not readily available to everyone. They're rolling that out. You know how each time there's a new feature, they have to do beta testing and stuff like that. And then recommendations. Okay, start recommending other people in your network, and then it's kind of like that um, reci reciprocation effect where, okay, they did it for me, I feel the need to do so. And when people see, especially those who are organizing conferences, see that you are um, being recommended for certain things, they're more likely to want to reach out to you. Make sense? Yeah. All right. And real quick, and with LinkedIn, it's all about getting into the personal message comment on posts and articles, and also comment in groups. All right? Take a picture of this. So we're wrapping up the end of this presentation. And again, if you would like access to these slides, but also just to see how you can implement automation into your social media, head on over to this link, m.me forward slash Monique O. Johnson Live. And be sure to click on the Get Started button and type in the word Facebook. I'll go back to that for you, Nancy. M.me forward slash Monique O. Johnson Live. Send me a message. Type the word Facebook, and you'll see that automation happen. Was this helpful? Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, guys. And hopefully, I'll talk to you at the end of this presentation.